It's hard to believe that it's been almost 20 years since the launch of the original Razer back in the day from Motorola. And now they're out with two new foldable phones in the Razer Plus and the regular Razer starting at $699 and $999. We're gonna walk you through some of the biggest upgrades, but we're also here with Maria who heads up marketing for uh, Motorola North America, as well as Ruben who really focuses on design and customer experience. And we're gonna grill them on what makes these phones different and how they stand out. So Ruben, why don't we start with you? Because one of the things I noticed when I first pick up this phone is the vegan leather, right? So that was one of the things that was actually exclusive to the red model last year. In terms of design, like what are the, like the biggest changes? I would say probably like how it looks and feels in your hand, but also just how much bigger the display is even than last year. If you notice in the details, this product is not bigger, larger, heavier than last year's device, but it had huge improvements on the battery department, on the display performance, on the external screen size, uh, going from 3.6 to now four inches. The product has truly been improved end-to-end -end across the board on all specifications, but to be a Razer, it needs to be the size. If this is based on the years of experience that we had talking to users, understanding what's the perfect proportion to fit in your hand, to carry all day in your pocket. And so we need to continue to improve the fold factor, but we can't make it bigger or heavier. Otherwise it stops being a Razer. So what do you feel like the, the, like the target audience is this time around with both phones? I think what's changing is how the customer, consumers are evolving with the technology, right? Last year, still people were getting used to the external display, but one of the top three reasons why consumers were buying, number one was brand, Razer, just the feeling of Razer. Number two was the outside screen and design, pocketability, which Ruben was explaining. So after understanding a lot with this research, we said one of the biggest tasks of consumers was like, we want more, right? So that's why in both devices, you are seeing bigger screens so people can use a lot more of their phone. But people want to more and more open less the phone, open when they need it, but be fully functional. So consumers that actually are buying Razer are gonna be more value segment, more what we call a smart shopper that don't want the top specs that you will have in Razer Plus, in innovation, in the chipset, but are really looking for still that design that stand out in a great balance. And then Razer Plus is gonna be more positioned in a post-paid market where they're willing to invest more in those top specs that we're bringing. I mean, it is a huge four inch display. So what can you and maybe what can't you do with it? Because I think you guys have said that a lot of people who've been using the, the previous generation product, they spend like tons of hours using just the front display because there's so much that you can do. So what, what can you do now that maybe versus last year on the external display? Uh, what you can do on this year's external display is really run any Android application. You can quickly access information, but where we put also a lot of attention is the giving the users options to personalize the use of that external display. So we have much more panels in which you can load uh, different types of applications, uh, widgets, direct access to music, for example, calendar, and so on. Uh, a lot of Google applications can be preloaded directly on certain panels as well. And customization. Uh, why? Because this is also a lifestyle product. It's an element of self-expression, the most personal device we carry with us all the time. And so we allow consumers to really personalize that external screen AI capabilities that we have now, uh, like StyleSync, like Magic Canvas, to really make that external screen an expression of yourself. Just like the color you selected as an expression of yourself, well, the point of the device that you set as well. Well, I think it's interesting that you brought up AI because it's a buzzword and it seems like every phone maker is, is using that and leveraging that in their, their presentations and new phones, but it seems like you're taking your own approach. So you, obviously you're, you're working with Google and Gemini, but you're also coming out with your own technology called Moto AI. So can you maybe walk through some of those features as well? You know, we, we, took, we took an approach across what do consumers do with devices today? Mm -hmm. Primarily, and we have a lot of research on this, they capture, create, and consume content on their mobile phones. So as, as you saw with our products, we put a lot of emphasis on the screen experience, both external and internal. It's not that AI now completely changes the way you use the device. It's just there seamlessly making what you do today with your device even better. While you're customizing your, your phone, you stumble across, oh, I can also AI generate my own wallpaper. Is that a good example of that? That's a great example. So like I was saying, when it comes to capturing content, AI is working behind the scenes to make video and still photography much better on, on the new Razer products. 
It's somewhat controversial in the sense that you've removed one camera in favor of another on the Razer Plus, and that is like you added an optical zoom, which I, I think I would like, but you, but in order to do that, you had to take away the ultra wide. So is part of that, like that conversation that you've been having with customers and they tell you what you want? Because I mean, it, it is a trade-off, but it's a trade-off I'm assuming that you're making for a reason. Totally. You know, every decision is made based in consumer research, right? So here was the balance between those two cameras and not compromising design have mm -hmm. to drive those choices. We see a lot of more usage of the phone with the front camera, mm -hmm. a lot more portrait photos, photos, and you know, the telephoto camera definitely like enhance that and brings better pictures. So looking at the usage, that's what's driven. I mean, I think the one thing that stands out for me is that the regular razor doesn't seem like a watered down or light you know, foldable, like maybe last year's could have seemed to some people because the external display was so small. I think one of the questions that people still have about foldable phones in general, just because it, it still is a fairly young market is, is durability, right? So you have a partnership with Corning, but you've also come out with a, a new hinge for your device. And I have noticed right off the bat that the crease is not as noticeable as before. But how do you get people over that hump in terms of the durability concerns that they have with foldables? And, and how are you doing it with this device in particular? So. We know it's been a, an adoption concern for the consumers, but I think we've removed a lot of those barriers with, with this new generation. Uh, first and foremost, most devices are equivalent of traditional form factors from a feature, spec, and experience point of view. Yep, there, there are any longer those uh, features that you say, oh, I compromise because now I want a foldable device. No, even the battery, which in previous generations was one of those areas that uh, we just couldn't fit the larger battery in. Well, now, like, like I explained, we, we did actually increase battery significantly, but we didn't make the device bigger or thicker. So once we've removed those barriers in terms of I don't have to sacrifice features and specs compared to a digital phone, yes, the next question is durability. This lie addresses that by a completely redesigned hinge that's actually 30% smaller. Uh, it's smaller because we have less moving parts. Uh, it's more reliable because of that. There's less areas for dust to potentially get underneath the display. And then the device is completely waterproof. It's submersible. So can I take pictures underwater? If you yeah. launch the camera with uh, a twist of your wrist mm -hmm. and you put it in camcorder mode, uh, you'll see that there's a countdown and it actually kicks off the camcorder on that. You know, what parts from the original Razer do you feel like live on in the DNA of this device? I will say first, emotions, right? Razer is the one brand that can bring so many emotions to consumers. When we look at their bad things of consumers, like why you love, it's just the feeling of Razer, of hanging up, of having that pocketability in the hand. It's a lot of emotion, less rational thinking, right? So that's one. What Razer used to bring in people, still is bringing today. The iconic, positioning of Razer, of being a more fashion icon, style icon, and not sacrificing or compromising that, but still bringing innovation, right? Like the original Razer, and you see it with, with these products, uh, the design and the colors and the materials generate that emotional reaction that Maha was alluding to. So we want to continue with that. A very emotional product that you just want to touch and feel and put in your hands. Uh, but it carries through those lifestyle elements, elements of self-expression, and then combined with very advanced technology. So it's, it's that perfect balance. Thank you very much for your time, Ruben and Maria, and we look forward to testing out the new razors and you know putting it through the ringer. Yeah, thank you. Forward to repeat that. Thank right. you. Now that you've learned a little bit more about the Razer Plus and the Razer for 2024, make sure you go to tomsguide.com to see our full review of both of these devices once they come out and stay tuned for more coverage of both of these foldable phones from Tom's Guide.